Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. This tutorial is on escape sequences. I'm going to go ahead and open up my website, www.javacjava.com. Click the begin button. Scroll down to escape sequences. There are certain operations in Java that create problems when text is displayed to the console or elsewhere, like printing a page on a printer or something like that. Now, things like a tab, carriage return, or double quote need to be included in string literals. Java provides us the ability to handle situations like these with special syntax called escape sequences. When a character follows a backslash in either a character literal or a string literal, it is called an escape sequence. An escape sequence tells the compiler to perform a special instruction at the point of the escape sequence. An escape sequence is often referred to as an escape code or an escape character. Here's an example of a char data type. We got a variable b being assigned an escape sequence of backslash n inside single quotes. Okay, And there's a little chart of all the escape sequences here. We'll go over in a minute. And this is an example of a string data type being assigned to a variable, well, a string data type, variable A being assigned to the string literal here, right? And of course, a string literal is an opening double quote and a closing double quote to um, specify all the stuff inside of the string literal. Now, what if you want to include a double quote in there? Well, you have to use an escape sequence or an escape character, an escape code, whatever you want to call it here. And this is what a double quote escape sequence looks like. So it's a backslash followed by a double quote. The following is a chart of all the escape sequences Java supports. So backslash T is a horizontal tab, backslash B is a backspace, backslash N is a new line, backslash r is a carriage return, backslash f is a form feed, like if you're printing a print job to the printer and you want to call a form feed on that. Um, it backslash single quote, that's a single quote character, backslash double quote is a double quote character. And then of course, um, how do you represent a backslash? Well, you do it with two backslashes in a row. So this is the this is basically the backslash that's going to flag the compiler that the next character is going to be a special needs to be handled special. So there's a double backslash represents a single backslash when it's output to the console or, or elsewhere. And then an octal number, you could do a backslash XXX, whereas XXX represents the octal number, or a hexadecimal number, backslash U, XXXXX. And we did see that a little bit there when we went over the tutorial for um, character literals. You saw this um, hexadecimal, basically a Unicode that's what the U is short for there. That's Unicode notation. So that's, we went over a little bit of that. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get to the good stuff here. Let's uh, highlight all this, hit Control C or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off the screen. Start, search, type in CMD. If you're running 7 or earlier, Windows 7 or earlier, you can type in start run and select CMD. When the command prompt comes up, type in Java C and press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you don't, if you get like a maybe a single line error message there, go to my tutorial on how to install the Java development kit and go ahead and get that installed properly and that way you'll be able to do all the tutorials here. I'm going to type in CLS, which will clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. Do MD Java. Make That's uh, short for make directory. It'll make a make a Java folder. I already have it. If you don't, it would have created it. We'll go ahead and change directory to the Java folder and now we'll do a make directory and we'll call this escape sequence. Escape sequences. I'm typing CD and the CD and the MD, those are not case sensitive. You can like mix and match. It doesn't matter there. Um, e and then I'm going to hit tab to change the folder. Just a little shortcut there. Notepad, escape, sequences.java. Okay, escape sequences.java is our Java source code file, also known as a compilation unit. 
control V to paste it or right click and paste either way. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and let's talk about some of the stuff I've done here. So we've got a, a string data type, variable A, we're assigning it this string literal here, right? Inside of the string literal, I've got some escape sequence here for the double quote, and there's an escape sequence there. So it's an example of the double quote escape sequence in the single line comment following that statement. Um, B is B is probably the most complicated of these, but once I explain this, this will this will make complete sense. So we're going to create a column of the odd and even numbers, two oh, two columns of odd and even numbers, one through eight, right? So when we start this out, we've got odd, and then the backslash t is a tab. That's the tab escape character, and then we've got even. So that's going to be our column titles here, odd and even, separated by a tab. The backslash n is the new line escape sequence, so that'll go ahead and do a, a new line, right? And then on that new line, we're going to have the number 1, and then we're going to have a tab, and we're going to display 2. And then we're going to do another new line, 3, and tab 4. And then a new line, 5, tab 6, new line, 7, tab 8. Okay, so that's what's going to be in, that's the string literal that we're assigning to the B variable. Okay, now um, C, uh, let's create more escape sequence examples. So this is just the single quote example right here of that escape sequence there. And your cursor should now be at C colon, and then here's our escape sequence for the backslash, right, in here twice. So that's example of the backslash escape character. And then, of course, my, my favorite ASCII A, I've, I've used the uppercase ASCII A all over the place. If you've been following my tutorials, you know by now that's a decimal 65, but this is using an octal escape sequence. Uh, there's your escape character, and, and if you went over the octal literals tutorial, you know that an octal literal requires a leading zero. Well, for some reason, when they did the escape sequence um, here for for octals, they you don't have you don't you can't put a leading zero, and it'll it'll do some strange stuff if you do. If I did like zero one oh one, right? Because um, of course, 101 is the decimal equivalent of the 65 there. Okay, um, and then our ASCII a using a hexadecimal escape sequence. The hexadecimal escape sequence is the forward slash u, also known as the Unicode notation, right? And then there's our hexadecimal 41, which is equivalent to decimal 65, which is the uppercase ASCII, uppercase a in the ASCII chart. Okay. And then I got this, this little fun line down here. Um, string data type, typo is the, the name of my variable, and I'm assigning it the string literal of, I can't spell at the moment. So we've got an example of a single quote in here, and then we got an example of a backspace character here, which is actually going to fix my typo when it prints out. So let's go ahead and make sure this is saved. Let's clear our screen here. Let's type in Java C, which is the Java compiler, and I am just going to type in E and then hit tab. This is a shortcut. That'll just cause it to pull up the first file in this directory. So let's go ahead and compile that. Let's type in Java, and I'm going to hit E again and tab. We don't then, it found the first file in there now, which is dot class. We're going to take off that dot class because we're not we're not passing the, the file name to the Java runtime. We're passing the name of the um, class that we want to invoke. And the name of the class, the class definition up here is escape sequences. Okay, let's go ahead and hit enter on that. And we got exactly what we were looking for. So let's kind of set this over here there. So our first one, right? Using tab, there's our double quotes, escape sequence to align columns, right? That looks good. And then our next little thing where we did the odd and even, you now you can kind of see how this, this one plays out right there by using these escape sequences. You know, we got our tab here, we got our tab there, tab there, tab there, new line here, 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 and I no new line here. When I did the print line, System.out.println.b, it went ahead and put the line feed on the last on the final eight. Okay, let's create more escape sequence examples. That was just a um, example of a single quote escape sequence. And your cursor should be at the C colon 
backslash Java backslash escape sequences is how it, how that read because we used the that right and of course your cursor is down here at that so let's go ahead and pop this back up here all right and then um, ASCII a using the octal escape sequence there's our a right and ASCII a using hexadecimal escape sequence and there's our hexadecimal uppercase a and there's my I can't spell at the moment and you can see that L has been backspaced out so that fixed all my spelling spelling errors on that line and that statement there so let's go ahead and bring this back up here let's close out of that let's close out of that I uh, just want to leave you with some final thoughts I use escape sequences quite often mostly reading writing to files changing directories stuff like that um, one thing to remember when you're creating a string literal is you cannot type in a single backslash so you're typing along and you want to put a backslash in there and you just keep on typing right after that it's going to cause a problem because you have to remember that the backslash character um, flags the compiler that a special escape sequence character is going to follow and if whatever you have after you typed in backslash something or other um, isn't a valid escape sequence it's going to go off on, an, on a compile error there so Anyway, uh, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.